Hello my lovely friends, my name is Ava and today we're going to be talking about the 10 books that I've read so far in the beginning of August. This is my mid-month wrap-up for August so I'm just going to be mentioning the books that I've read from August 1st to August 15th. So let's get started. The first book that I ended up reading in August is uh, Ballet Master by Cassie Mint. I just wanted to pick up a short novella one night. I was having trouble sleeping, so I was like, let's just pick up a fun Cassie Mint novella. So this is one of her teacher's pet um, romances. So I think all of the ones in this like novella series are about like people falling in love with their teacher or coach. I gave this one three stars. There wasn't much to it. This is just about a very prominent dance instructor ballet instructor coming to watch this one ballet class and becoming kind of infatuated with one of the dancers and then they start falling for each other getting it on in ballet class when people aren't watching so <laughs> um this was fun a fun quick read I just gave it three stars there wasn't really anything else to it honestly I then decided to pick up a monster romance this is the Bigfoot's Mate by Delaney Rain so this is a Bigfoot romance it's also an MM romance our hero gets uh lost in the woods after his plane crashes and Bigfoot comes to save him and brings him to his cave and they fall in love with each other that's basically it it was really cute and sweet but I just wanted more from it there was a lot of things that were lacking and it was a little too insta lovey for my taste i only really prefer insta love in certain situations and unfortunately this was not it for me um but it was still cute and sweet so i just gave it three stars next i read wed to the wild god by ruby dixon this is her third book in the aspect and anchor series this is her fantasy romance series where like the books are like this thick <laughs> Well, the main books in this series because she does have novellas that take place in this world. So if you've never read any of the books in this series, the main books, um, basically it's about human women getting sucked through a portal into this fantasy land and they are the human anchor to gods that have been cast down from the heavens from their heavenly father or whatever um, and they have to go on a trek to um, on this land to reunite them to get back to the heavens basically to be a god so that's what the first two books were about this one is kind of like flipped so we have kasam our god in this situation gets transported to earth to where carly is the first half of this book takes place on earth and then the second half takes place in this fantasy land which is very different compared to the other ones because all the other ones basically completely take place in the fantasy world um so it was very interesting reading about this um god from this fantasy land getting like to know earth customs and earth foods and everything earth related. Kassam has this kind of like curse on him to be a very desirable and so there are people flocking to him from left and right um on earth and Carly is so sick of it. Carly is sick of it. She's not having it so they're trying to find um a way for Kassam to go back home so that's like what the plot is about. The first two books in the series I just loved it so much because they were full of angst and tension. The other two are slow burn like not until the like 70-80% mark do the couple get do the couple get together because like there's just this tension like they're not like it's so good it's so good. This one was not slow burn whatsoever um since he has this desire curse on him him and Carly hook up like chapter two and they keep doing it the whole entire book um so there wasn't really much angst and much tension between the two because they were already like an established couple throughout the entire book i really enjoyed the characters and the world the world the fantasy world i love reading about it but this one just wasn't my favorite because of the aspect of the lack of slow burn and tension and them just being together like hooking up the entire book and after like the fifth time of it happening, I was like, come on, I'm I'm just sick. I just want to get done. I gave it 3.5 stars for the characters and the world building, but it was not my favorite Ruby Dixon, unfortunately, which is so sad to say. Next is a favorite from the month. This is Delilah Green and It Doesn't Care by Ashley Herring Blake. I loved this. This was so so oh, good. So Delilah grew up in a very small town. Um, her dad married her stepmom when she was quite young and then she also received a stepsister along with that. Delilah and her stepsister Astrid have never really gotten along. They've never been close. They've never been friends and Delilah never really had any friends. She was kind of ostracized by everybody but it's years later. She's all grown up now and she's been hired by Astrid to come take pictures at her uh, wedding because Delilah is a very talented photographer. She comes back into town, she runs into Claire, who is one of Astrid's best friends. The two of them can't stop 
thinking about each other. However, there are some outside conflicts going on. I'm not gonna mention what they are because that would be a spoiler, but there are some outside things going on that kind of like prevent them from opening up about their feelings and things like that. So I thoroughly loved this one. I loved the tension between these two characters. This was one of those romances where the chemistry between the two characters just comes up off the page. Like it was so apparent. The author also did an amazing job with writing about side characters and side conflicts in here. So like Delilah and Astrid, like their sister relationship, Claire and her daughter, um, even Delilah and Claire's daughter, Claire and her ex's relationship too. Like everything worked so well in here. I cannot wait to read the other books in the series when they come out because I just, I, I loved this one so much so hopefully the other books are as good as this one as well so tropes in here I can finally mention tropes if you didn't know I only really list the tropes off for books that I like so yeah so tropes in here you have best friend sibling a character with glasses it's Claire in here um it's an LGBTQ plus romance it's opposites attract you can kind of tell from the cover um it's a romance with kids involved it's sapphic it's single mom single parent and small town i gave this book a five out of five stars i loved it i finally then picked up when the earl met his match by stacy reed this is her fourth book in the wedded by scandal series i've been reading this series to get to this one specifically um because i know that people have said that this one has disability rap in it and it does have disability rap the hero in here is not able to speak so he communicates through sign language and written word because a lot of people don't know sign language um and so he basically like writes everything his name is hugh he's the future earl of albury albury and so he needs a wife um because he's gonna be the earl soon his dad has been told that he will pass from sickness any day now and so he's trying to find a wife because that's what his dad wants like he, that's like his dying wish he's like i want you to find a wife and so he puts an ad in the newspaper like listing all of the qualities that he wants for a wife and so our heroine in here um her name is phoebe lady phoebe she sees the ad and finds it ridiculous she writes him back just for fun and she's like i don't know how you're gonna find a woman that's gonna meet any of these qualities sir like are you serious that then starts a bantering relationship over letters between the two um it kind of reminds me of um, to Sir Philip with Love by Julia Quinn a little bit in that aspect because they're writing back and forth. They don't know who the person actually is, but like feelings start to, to, to develop through writing letters. Then something happens to Phoebe where she decides to run to Hugh and go to his estate and basically ask him for a marriage of convenience between them. Hugh decides for whatever reason to accept. You read about why the two of them need this marriage of convenience when you read the book, obviously. I feel like this was a great like friends to lovers romance. Um, Hugh is definitely like smitten and taken with Phoebe from the get-go, but Phoebe kind of sees Hugh as a very close friend and confidant. I love the progression that it shows in the book of her falling for Hugh and seeing him in a different way. I do however feel like I was missing some things when reading the book, um, but that honestly may just be Libby's fault. <laughs> honestly, I don't know what it was with this book, but every time I opened my audiobook after like taking a break or whatever, I opened the book to resume where I was and Libby would jump like two chapters ahead without me realizing until like an hour later. I'm like, where is it? What is going on? Where is this coming from? What did I miss? And I was like, oh, it jumped a freaking two whole chapters without me knowing. Why did this happen? And that happened a few times and I was so upset and a little confused. So maybe I just need to reread this one time with everything going smoothly. I did, however, really enjoy this one and I think other people will too. For tropes in here, you have, it's a historical, it has disability representation. There is a language barrier because at first, um, Phoebe does not know sign, um, but she learns for him very quickly and he's very, very, very impressed by that. It's a marriage of convenience. Um, it's about a married couple. They're married throughout a lot of this book. It's a pen pal romance. The hero is reluctant to love and it's about a ruined heroine as well. I really enjoyed this book. I gave it four out of five stars. I decided to pick up another Cassie Mint novella one night. So I decided to pick up finally Thin Ice. This is like almost everybody's favorite Cassie Mint book and I can see why I can. This is a figure skating romance between a figure skater named Mila and her coach Logan. And so it's very forbidden. Obviously the two of them get together and they're trying to hide their feelings but they can't and the rest goes from there. Okay so I really enjoyed this. Okay don't get me wrong I really liked it. I'm giving it four stars. I feel like I did not love this one as much as everyone else because <laughs> Logan is my sister's name. <laughs> So I messaged Rachel. I love Rachel. I talk to her almost every single day. She's the Cassie Mint queen. Her and Samantha are. Anyway, 
I messaged her because I know she's been wanting me to read Thin Ice, everyone has, that's love Cassie meant because I haven't read it yet. And I messaged her and I immediately, I'm like, oh, I'm starting it tonight, like I'm excited. And she's like, yay. And then I sent her a message back when I realized what the hero's name is. <laughs> His name is Logan. And I sent her just a bunch of barf <laughs> emojis. And I'm like, Rachel, the hero has my sister's name. <laughs> she's like, oh no. And I'm like, okay, I'll be fine as long as the heroine just doesn't like incessantly moan his name. Like, I don't want to read about that. What does the heroine do throughout the majority of this book? Moan his name. <laughs> and so I don't find it very <laughs> appealing and entertaining to read about someone just moaning my sister's name during <laughs> intimate scenes. <laughs> like, that's not something I enjoy, you know? Maybe I I kept skipping over those parts. Like I was like, I don't want to read this. This is weird. So I kept like just skipping over this part. So I enjoyed the story overall. They were just, it took me out of the story and that's a personal thing. And I totally, totally understand. So yeah, uh, for tropes in here, you have age gap, brooding hero. It's a student coach relationship. Uh, there's figure skating, it's forbidden. It's on Kindle Unlimited, it's a novella and it is a sports romance. I gave this book a four out of five stars. I decided to pick up a monster romance next. This is The Beast by Jenica Snow. I decided to buddy read this with Brie from In Love and Words because we both love Beauty and Beast retellings and we love monster romances. So yes, we needed to read this one together. This is basically the animated Disney version of Beauty and the Beast without magic and without a curse um, and a heck of a lot sexier. <laughs> so the beast in this book is a beast the entire entire book. There's no curse whatsoever. And he's had his eyes on Belle for quite a while. He lives in the castle next to this village. He spies on her all the time and realizes that her dad is not a good man and he is in a lot of financial debt. And he wants Belle so badly. So he's like, I'll pay for your daughter to marry her. And so he does just that. He sells his daughter to the beast. And then the rest goes from there with the typical Beauty and the Beast story. Um, this was very entertaining and very hot. <laughs> the beast had quite the mouth on him, which was honestly really entertaining. <laughs> I had fun reading this one with Brie. It was very entertaining just chatting with her about it. And there wasn't really much else to it. It's just like, a hot version of Beauty and the Beast. For tropes in here, you have Alpha Hero, Beauty and the Beast retelling. There's a height difference. Um, the Hero Falls First. It's on Kindle Unlimited. It's about a married couple. It's a monster romance. And a new trope that I have is tails. The hero uses his tail in here in quite some unique ways. <laughs> and I had fun. Bree and I had fun, okay? Um, I give this book a four to five stars. Next, I picked up Broken Whispers by Neva Altaj. This is her second book, Two Painted Scars, a book that I read last month, which is the mafia romance book where the hero uses a few mobility aids and he's a bratva boss. And so this is book two in the series. You have one of the guys from the uh, bratva, the Russian mafia. Um, his name is Mikhail. Mikhail. He is large like he's a giant man he is covered in scars he's missing an eye um he's very broody he's a very broody and scarred hero and this is his arranged marriage with bianca who was like the most beautiful woman in the italian mafia they're trying to form an alliance between the two families so that's what they do bianca is a very prolific ballerina she is a beautiful dancer and so yeah she gets put in the situation by her father and she can't really get out of it um but she decides to make the most of it she's very sweet and kind and caring and just really wants to get to know mikhail however both of them have a really traumatic past um mikhail kind of talks about later on in the book finally becomes vulnerable with Bianca about what happened to him and his past and why his body has taken the brunt force of so many things. And then Bianca talks about things that she's gone through. She li she's lived in an abusive household her whole life and she is not able to speak anymore due to an injury. So she communicates through sign also. And so yeah, the two of them just like are coming together to figure out this whole marriage thing. This was so sweet. And I thought it was epic. I love these two together. It was a really, beautiful romance to me. I loved it. Um, this series is very mafia like light. The mafia isn't really talked about all that much, but it's it's there. Um, but there is short warnings in here for gun violence, domestic violence, mentions of abuse, violence and torture um so there are things like mafia related in there like trigger warnings um but i would definitely say it's mafia light compared to some mafia other mafia books that i've read and i just love like fully staying on here on page the two of them falling in love because i could definitely see it on page however <laughs> well technically mikhail has been in love with bianca for quite a long time because mikhail actually 
like knew of Bianca when she was a ballerina on stage. She recently retired because of her injury. She has another injury. He's been watching her for years as a ballerina and just has noticed her and is is like infatuated with her just from her dancing. Um, and so when the opportunity arises to volunteer to get married to a woman from the Italian mafia, Mikhail goes for it. I'm going to mention some memorable quotes here. Um, first, you have one from Mikhail. It says, you touch my wife again in any way, I cut off your head. I hear you speak badly about her, I cut out your tongue. You even dare to think about hitting her ever again, I cut off your head. Another one he says is, um, no one is allowed to look at you, Bianca, just me. You have a very possessive in charge man here, love it. And then Bianca at one point says or tells him, because I'm in love with you, every part of you, your grumpy personality included, effing deal with it. <laughs> Tropes in here, you have age gap, arranged marriage, caretaking scene, um, a dancer, Bianca's a dancer. Doesn't like to be touched. Mikhail is a man who doesn't like to be touched. He realizes that Bianca's touch is totally different. Like he doesn't feel like his body is boiling alive when this woman touches him. And so he takes advantage of that. <laughs> like, because he finally realizes that there's a person out there who like he can touch without feeling horrible. So this is a Hero Falls first romance. It's on Kendall Unlimited. There is Longing. It's a mafia book. There is Disability Rep. Bianca is not able to speak. Um, there's a Scott character who is Mikhail and it is a single dad romance too. I gave this book five out of five stars. I really enjoy it and can't wait to read more of her books. This is her um, sophomore book. It's her second book. Like Oh my goodness, it's so good. I got Kelraz the Vicious last month for free as a freebie. And so I was like, why not just pick it up? It's like 80 something pages. So I did. This is just a short monster romance novella between Kelraz and Sylvie. Sylvie is a human woman who has volunteered to be an orc bride in this universe, in this world. Cause I think this is book eight in the series. I haven't read any other books, but basically orcs have been sucked through a portal into earth and they can't go back home. And so scientists are trying to find out how to bring the portal back. In the meantime, the orcs want payment. They want human brides. And so Sylvie has been one of the women who volunteered to do this. And so Kelraz the Vicious is one of the orcs that is going to choose a bride. He chooses Sylvie um, and the two of them have to navigate them being mated now. I didn't necessarily love this one, unfortunately. I really liked the situation these two were in and how they first got together. I thought it was really cool, really entertaining. But there are things in here that I just didn't really love. There's the girl hate, jealous girl trope in here where one orc woman wants to kill a heroine because she's with the man she's in love with. I'm like, I don't care for the jealous girl trope whatsoever in romances. I don't like that when that's the conflict. I feel like it's a cheap cop out for making conflicts in books. I also feel like this should have been a full length book. Um, the characters fell in love way too quickly for my taste. When it comes to novellas, you know an author is a good novella writer when you don't feel like you need more because something was lacking. People normally want more with the novella because they love the book so much, they just wanna read the like, read more about the characters and read more about their life. If a novella leaves you wanting more than the fact that things were lacking in the book, that's where you need to stop and realize this needs to be a full length book instead, you know? Um, again, I'm not a writer, so again, don't, don't take my word, you know? I don't know things, just, this is just my feelings as a reader, you know? The relationship just happened way too quickly and I did not see whatsoever why these two fell for each other. I just feel like, like, they were very awkward and, like, um, shy around each other. All of a sudden, then they get together in the bedroom and then all of a sudden they're in love. Like, I don't, I didn't see the progression and I love to see the progression, honestly. Something that I did think was really cool, <laughs> which I never see in romance books is, or in books in general, is the heroin in here is gluten intolerant. And I have to put that there because I can't have gluten. I have a celiac disease. So um, I thought that was a little little star plus in here. I had a bump, bump half a star for me personally, <laughs> because like I love seeing that rep and that's just a personal thing for me, I know. So trigger warnings in here, you have attempted essay, drugging, poison, blood, death, murder. I gave this book a three out of five stars. And the last book that I read in the first half of August is Given to the Gladiator by Olivia T. Turner. This is a gladiator romance. I don't know if it's historical. I don't know, because it, it's kind of set during Roman times with gladiators and stuff, but the language is very much like present day. So I don't feel comfortable saying this is historical when they talk literally the exact same way we do. Anyway, this is about Queso and Elovisa, Elovisa, Elovisa. Anyway, Elovisa um, is a human slave who basically gets given to Queso 
as a prize because he is a gladiator and um he's rejected like all slave women who have been brought to him because he doesn't want to do that to a woman but when he first sees i can never remember her name elvosia a lot i can't say her name <laughs> there's claire l okay um when he immediately sees l he's like okay i want this woman this one's gonna be mine and he protects her and yeah there's nothing much else to this um i did enjoy the writing i feel like this could be amazing as a full-length book um so i'm just gonna give it three stars um but it was very entertaining and i loved the gladiator aspect in here i love gladiator books honestly anyways there you have it those are the 10 books that i've read so far in the first half of august let me know down below if you've read any of these books or if you plan to and if you don't feel like commenting any of those things you can leave me a sea creature emoji that might be fun. Yes, sea creature emoji. But anyways, thank y'all so so much for watching. I will see y'all soon in my next one. Bye y'all. Wake up. Today's gonna be a good day. 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 Wake up. Today's gonna be a good day.